What's going on? Welcome to another five pillar mobility session. Today our focus is on the hips and the neck. Let's start by finding a nice comfy spot lying on your back. Taking some attention to your breath. Noticing the sensation of that breath. Feeling that breath come in through the nose and slowly out through the nose. And making a conscious effort to slow that breath down to a nice pace that helps you find calm. If you find counting your breaths helpful, feel free to count at a pace that works for you. Counting is not necessary. Just find that rhythm that helps you relax. Let's take a quick body scan through those hips. On your next exhale, imagine those quads just deflating, letting go of tension. And on the next exhale, directing that tension out through your glutes and hip flexors. We'll take a couple of breaths with the attention on the upper body. On the next exhale, just imagine getting nice and soft through those traps, through your neck, through your face, through your brow, letting go of any tension. And we'll take one more breath here. You can slowly sigh out that breath. And we'll focus our attention on the left hip flexor. Let's go face down on your lacrosse ball. And place that lacrosse ball right around the crease of your left hip. And do some searching through that hip, looking for what needs attention. And when you've found a spot that feels tense, experiment a little bit with how we're tackling that tension, the angle we're leaning on that lacrosse ball, how much we're leaning into it, and when you've found that right spot for today, take your attention back to your breath. Imagine exhaling tension around that hip flexor as you exhale air. And this whole time breathing at a pace that helps everything slow down, helps you find that state of calm in your mind and then use that state of calm to help relax your body. Immensely going to your happy place and allowing yourself to enjoy the moment. Let's take an exhale here and we'll switch into the right side. So starting around that hip crease on the right side Doing a little search to find what needs attention today. And that will tend to change from person to person, from day to day, depending on what you've been up to, how much we've been sitting, how much mobility work you've been doing, or how little. No judgment. Just find that spot that feels like it needs some work today and then feel out what kind of tension and stimulus that spot's gonna benefit from today. And this really just comes from feeling things out. We're going into a spot and things around that tissue are tending to tense up. Just ease off on that tension. Find the right stimulus, that right amount of pressure that helps that tissue calm. Focus back on your breath. One more long, slow, relaxing breath here. Feel that belly rise. We'll slowly sigh out that breath. 
Then we'll shift into the left quadricep. So back to your original side and just panning through that thigh muscle, searching for tension. This is a pretty big muscle. A lot of different areas can be tense. Try not to fall into your comfort zone spot. Try to really feel out what needs attention on this side. And then find the right amount of tension to address that tissue. And then settle back into your breathing. Doing your best to sink your breath with that target tissue. Helping yourself find calm. Taking a moment to scan through the body, turning off any muscle we don't need. Relaxing through your feet, your hands, your face. Getting as passive as you can throughout your whole body. Allowing yourself to let go of any stress you've been carrying. And finding that state of peace and calm. One more breath here. Take your time sighing out that breath. And we'll switch to the right side. So it's not a bad strategy to start around the same spot on this side, but don't assume the same spot will be the same amount of tense on this side. Do some searching. Look for what needs attention. Do some experimenting with how you're applying pressure. And then settle back to your breath. And again, counting your breath can be a good option. It can be a good way to track your breathing and progress, gradually getting to a slower pace as we work our way through the program. You might start with a four count in, a four count hold, a four count out, and a four count hold, and gradually work your way up to a five, six, seven count. That's gonna be at your own pace or your own progression. And it's not a requirement, this is really your own adventure. Just find that pace that helps you find a nice relaxing state and help that tissue settle down. Let's take one more breath here. Slowly let go of that breath. And we'll move into the left trap. So we'll go face up on your mat with that lacrosse ball on that trapezius muscle. These are your big shrugging muscles. They tend to carry a lot of stress so just be sensitive to that. If they're very tender, just ease up on that tension. Find the right amount of pressure that helps those traps to settle down. And there's multiple layers to how we can apply this tension. Generally, a higher tension will give us a deeper release. But we want to be sensitive to how that stimulus is affecting the rest of the body. That said, if it's feeling good and we want to go a little more aggressively, you can lift your hips off your mat to increase the pressure in around that trap. Just experiment with it and find that right tension, that right stimulus that your body's telling you it needs today. And once you've found that right stimulus, doing your best to sink back to your breath, sinking that target tissue to the rhythm of your breath. Just relaxing through that target tissue. Let's take one more breath here. We'll slowly sigh out that breath and move into the right side. So do some searching through this side. It might feel very similar, it might feel very different. Just be sensitive to what it's telling you it needs. When you found that right stimulus, that right location, settle back to your breathing. And if we, as we work our way through this 
time here working on this trap, it does start to settle down. You can settle into a little bit more aggressive pressure, just always being sensitive to your body's reaction. We don't want pain, we don't want numbness, we don't want any added tension. Just find the right stimulus that's going to sync well with your body today. And then settle back to your breathing. Finding a nice state of calm and passiveness. Turning off any muscle we don't need. There should be nothing fighting this position. Just accept the position, submit to this stimulus, and allow yourself to enjoy the moment. Take one more breath here. We'll slowly sigh out that breath and move into some neck circles. Let's do this seated, just a comfy spot. You can be in a straddle or a cross leg or kneeling, whatever position feels good for you today. And we'll just take your neck through some range of motion, starting by bringing your chin to your chest, slowly dragging your chin across your chest towards your shoulder, tilting that chin up to the sky Moving it through full extension across that upward position and then back to the opposite shoulder, down to your starting spot, and then reversing the direction. And all of this is at your own pace and being aggressive as your body will handle pain-free. So as you work your way through these last reps, challenge yourself to get a little deeper into that range, just being sensitive to how it's feeling. And we'll shift ourselves into a lumbar traction. So if you're familiar with other options here on lumbar traction, you have access to them, you can do that. We're gonna demonstrate tractioning through a box, just perching your hips off the edge of a box or a tabletop or a armchair, whatever you have handy. And the idea here is getting a subtle separation between your upper and lower half to relieve the tension and pressure in that lower spine. And as we're doing this, just being sensitive to how your body's responding. You have a history of low back flare-ups. This may not be comfortable. Just find a level of pressure release your body's okay with. And then using your breath to stay as calm and passive as we can. Let's take one more breath here. You can slowly sigh with that breath. And we'll transition into a frog pose. Transition back to your mat in a tabletop. Spread those knees apart. Let those hips sink a little closer to the floor to target that inner thigh and groin area. And just find the right amount of stretch that feels right for your body today. There's no need to be super aggressive. Just find a stretch and a stimulus that feels right feels nice, allows you to stay relaxed, and target that inner thigh area. As you work your way through this minute, you may find depth, but we're not getting deeper by forcing, we're getting deeper by relaxing. In about 10 seconds, we'll gently get active through that inner thigh. So imagine squeezing your knees closer together and closing that gap. And let's go ahead, starting with nice, easy tension through that inner thigh. Imagine squeezing the knees closer together, raising those hips, ramping up tension as we go. Big tension here to finish up. Three, two, one. Let's gently reverse, squeezing through your outer thighs, your glutes, to pull those hips closer to the floor, spread those knees further, ramping up tension as we go. Big tension here for these last five. Three, two, one. Let go of that breath. Find your passive position in that frog pose. Mentally, let's go back to that happy place. Turning off any muscle we don't need. Relaxing through the head, neck, face, those arms. Just submitting to the stretch. Let's take one more breath here. Slowly sigh out that breath. 
and we'll come to our feet into a standing straddle. So let's spread those feet as far as is comfortable to stretch out that groin again. This time adding a bit of hamstrings by forward folding towards the floor. And if you can get your palms to the floor, great. If you can get your elbows to the floor, great. Get your head all the way to the floor if you're very flexible. It's all fair game. Just find the version of this stretch that works for you today. And then once we're there, consciously work on getting as passive as we can in every muscle group possible. There are some muscles we need right now just to hold the position. But think about relaxing through your feet, relaxing through your head and neck. And in a few seconds, we'll gently get active through that inner thigh again. I imagine squeezing those feet closer together. And let's go ahead, starting with just some subtle pressure, slowly ramping up that pressure and tension as we go. Really ramping that pressure up these last five, three, two, one. Let's gently reverse that. Imagine squeezing those feet further apart, starting with easy tension and just gradually working your way up, being a little more aggressive as we go. Big tension here for these last five, three, two, one. Let's let go of that breath. Get as passive as we can through those hips. And as passive as we can throughout the whole body. Focusing your attention on that nice calming rhythm of your breath. Just finding a nice relaxing state of mind. One more breath here. Take your time sighing out that breath. Let's move into a hip counter rotation. Let's move back to your mat in a reverse tabletop. So knees and hips are at 90 degrees. You're going to start by putting your hands on opposite sides of your knees and attempt to move your knees in opposite directions, resisting with the hips and holding for a three count and then switching back and forth every three. And as we work our way through these reps, getting a little bit more aggressive each rep, being conscious to not dive into any pain, just adding a little bit more force through those hips with each rep. In these last 15 seconds, let's add a little bit more tension and pressure. And let's place your fists in between your knees and give a squeeze into those fists, activating that inner thigh, pulsing on and off. Big pressure here, one more rep. Let's let go, get nice and passive. Let's get into a tabletop and work through some left hip circles. So we'll start from tabletop, pulling that knee as far into your chest as you can. Pulling that left knee out to the side. In adduction, working through the outer limits and that fire hydrant motion into full extension on the back, pushing that knee up to the sky. And continually working your way through the outer limits of your hips. And in the second half of the minute here, let's try to be a little more aggressive. Sometimes it's helpful to push with a second wind. When you feel like you've hit your end range, give it a subtle push a little further, a little more aggressive as far as pain allows. Let's really make those hips work for this last 10 seconds. Fighting for those outer limits, attempting to carve out new range. And we'll finish off that rep and switch into the right side. Go back into tabletop, pull that knee into your chest. Again, adduct that knee out to the side. Moving it along the limits as you move back into that extension, pressing that heel up to the sky. And then starting again from the top. And again, each rep, challenge yourself to find new range. Pulling that knee aggressively in towards that chest. Sometimes pushing with that second wind will give you a new range you didn't realize was there and keep working your way through. Each rep, get a little more aggressive at every single position. The harder we work here, generally the better results we get and the more stability we create around those hips and the better we become at resisting injuries at those typically vulnerable end range positions. 
And we'll finish off this rep. Give yourself a nice relaxing breath. Let's sigh out that breath and we will call it a day. Hope you guys enjoyed the session. Hope your hip and neck are feeling great. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe to us. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Have a great day.